This is the Cano computer with a Raspberry Pi built into it. It's a computer system that teaches kids how to be able to program. So by the time they're in their teens, they're going to be really comfortable with the thought of programming. So if that's something they want to then pursue, they won't be held back by what most adults would consider a daunting task, you know, learning how to program from the, from the very beginning. So this is why I'm so excited about the Cano computer. I've actually bought two of them, one for reviewing and for me to mess around with and create subsequent videos afterwards, and another I'm going to be giving to a friend. So let's pop one aside. Nice packaging. Mmm. So in this video, I'm going to be unboxing it, putting it together. We're going to go through the unboxing experience, see what's inside the kit so you know what you're going to receive when you get yours. I'm really excited to see how this turns out and see just how easy it is to get into. The box is really high quality, it's got a nice texture to it and the um, the keyboard and the Raspberry Pi here have got like a shiny texture to it, you can see that there. And it's all very well made. It feels like that would be an exciting thing to open if it was wrapped up as a present. Oh. There's a magnet running across here. See? So it feels nice to open. I shouldn't have been holding it up. In the lid here we've got an uh, instruction book. Pop that in shot just to be all presentable. So it looks like there's some stickers in here so you can put it on the Raspberry Pi or on your TV, not on the screen. <laughs> if the owner has uh, their own TV just for this, because you can connect it to a TV or you can buy a little screen for it. I might put their stickers on there. So it's the alphabet in all different colours, capitals, lowercase, numbers, the Cano logo itself, some smiley faces. And well, there's some emojis down there as well. If you love your Cano kit, tell the world. Leave us a review online for good karma. Problems or questions with a UK telephone number and a US telephone number. Awesome. Some protective foam over this. Oh, look at all that. Nice. Oh, it's high quality. I was expecting that to be kind of on the cheap side, but no, it's nice buttons on the keyboard there. I can run my nails across that and it's not catching in there. Uh, in a nasty way, that's that light system by the looks of it. And a button. Is that a button? Oh, I meant to pull this out. Yes. I guess that goes on there. Ooh. It's got a nice feel for it. And power supply. Now, I want to know how good the power supply is because the Raspberry Pi needs a lot of power sometimes. Um, so let's have a look. Output, oh it's a good one. The output 5 volts, 12 watts, 2.4 amps. So it's over 2 amps, which is the, the sweet spot. And that won't overload it. It'll just allow the Raspberry Pi to draw more power as it needs to. With, with normal chargers, like for your phone, if you've got an older phone and you've got a power brick like this with a USB port on it, uh, they're often underpowered. Not powerful enough to run the Pi, but this, they've, they've picked a good one. Turn Max is the uh, brand on that. Cool. Now, in videos that I've seen, I couldn't figure out how this case goes together from looking at it. Well, there's the memory card. Sort of looks like it snaps together. We'll have a look at how to do that in the instruction book. Just gonna have a quick look at the Raspberry Pi to make sure it's all cool. This one is the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B version 1.2. And the memory card is inside its adapter here. I think we can safely plug that straight into the Raspberry Pi, so I'm going to pull that out of there. And here I'm left with a micro SD card. How big is that? It's 16 gigabytes. It's a SanDisk Edge 
micro SD HC1 class 4. Boom, in it goes. Let's have a look at the instructions and see how to put that case together. Hey, I'm Jadoka, your computer companion, ready to go? I know that they put a difficult to pronounce name there <laughs> for um, a child to read. Anyway, so box contents, set the keyboard. Computer's brain, it's tiny but powerful. Pull the memory card out, slot it in. I've already done that step. Grab your light ring. I feel like a kid again. Honestly, this reminds me of the times I used to play Lego Mindstorms, Meccano, Connects, something like that. Um, so here it shows me how to line up the lights here. So it appears to be that way around. Someone's enjoying the box. Are you having fun? I know I am. Are you enjoying? <laughs> uh, right, so that's the light installed and the button, the all important button. I don't know that it's important, I'm just excited. Make sure you cover all the pins. I have done that. Duh, duh, lovely. Add the power button. Is that the power button? Interesting. We've added a soft touch power button. Lovely. To keep strong and safe, let's make the case. Grab the sides and line them up. Place the brain between the case slides. Sides even. And slide them together. Okay. So these are different. They're not the same on both sides. This has got three holes in it. So. He loves boxes so much. So we're going to stick this in here. High quality plastic by the way. I have to just raise my voice over the sound of the, the cardboard. I don't want to stop him. He's enjoying it. Uh, so uh, very high quality plastic. Like there's its weakest point and I'm gripping that fairly hard. That's not even flexing. Smash! It is flexing when I put some effort into it, but it's really strong. That's like five mil thick. I'm gonna show this because it's relevant. Because kids might throw this, drop this. It, this keeps it strong and safe. How thick that is. That's not just the connecting point. It goes all the way around. I got this the wrong way around. There you go. See, really thick plastic. And the same on the other. The bottom is. Uh, the only thin part. It's not thin, it's just slightly thinner. Anyway, let's pop this in. It's as simple as that is. Yeah, there's no lining up, you just push it in and it just lines itself up because it's got this lip. Lines it all up. And... Yeah, I guess that just goes like that. There's two little tabs on the tops here. Which sort of, ah, right, yeah, I didn't, ah, right, okay. So uh, there's little lines down there and there which hold the PCB, or the back of the Raspberry Pi, I mean this green card-like area. So that's actually what I need to aim for, not up here, or both. And now I can see it's lined up, so now I'll, right, there you go. Oh, what happened? Yeah, what's not? I just didn't push it hard enough. I was being too, I'm always delicate with new things. And there's plenty of room to grab the memory card. Some cases it's hard to grab the memory card on. Next step, next step. Is it lid? Lid. Oh my god, there's a cavity down here. Cables. Yeah, I can't believe I didn't start thinking about what was under the keyboard. <laughs> And that lines up with the power button. Yeah, it just pushes down. Lovely. Awesome, a powerful protected processor. The lid is quite thin. Uh, I have to say that. And it rattles. It's not it's not a lot, but it's it's sort of 
it's not quite perfect and they could fix that. It's not a problem with the design of the case. It's simply that this top section doesn't marry up with these four pins properly. If they extended those pins or made the top extrusion a little bit wider, that would be slightly nicer. Let's connect it to a screen. Oh my God, I haven't got a HDMI screen in here. It's okay, we're just doing an unboxing. We'll, we'll, we'll sort something else out. But anyway, we'll cover that step. It's the, uh, it's the yellow cable the HDMI cable and I like it already because the ends are really strong uh, thick rubbery plastic and it's flat it is very thin so that's good for if you step on it and it's also got these covers that go over the connectors as well to keep the dust out USB cable. Oh, instructions it's not pulling anything out so it says connect it to your computer okay I'll connect it to my computer Find a screen or a TV with this kind of plug. It shows the HDMI connector. Connect the other end of the cable to your screen. You need a way to talk to your computer. Grab your keyboard. Grabbed. Ooh, it's got a cable. Oh my god, it's a wireless cable. A cable. Keyboard. And it's got a built-in rechargeable battery. So no batteries or double A's, a power button. And, uh, oh, let's do an unpeel. This is for charging only because that wireless adapter is there. Oh, ah, that goes into the thing. That goes into the uh, the Raspberry Pi. And going ahead of the instructions again, this is the wireless receiver. So it slides out of its um, oh, tight fit. Uh, it slides out of its little storage bay and then into there so then the keyboard can talk to the Pi. It's cool. It's got a trackpad on it as well, so that's going to be the mouse. You drag your finger here like a laptop, and left and right mouse buttons here. They don't physically depress, so I guess you just tap that area and it picks up on that. Oh, or you can use this, I think this is left and right click. Yeah. Press the button, any lights on it? Yes, there's a light flashing. I think that that means it's trying to find the computer, but of course there's no power going into the receiver, so it won't be able to find it. Can we turn it off? We can turn it off. That's going to be the power cable. <sighs> Dying to unwrap it, but no, let's find, let's find the next step. Take out the white piece. Done it. This USB has a radio antenna. Plug the piece into your computer. Already done it. And it's in the same port. That, uh, that the arrow's pointing to on this. Now the keyboard and the brain are connected. Let's bring it to life. Grab the red pieces. Red for power, I guess. Ooh, this looks like a long cable. Oh, I like the fact that it's flat. It's a really high quality cable. It's really thin, this one is. But not thin to the point of feeling weak or um, easy to damage. No, it's just very strong it's like super high quality because they've built this with kids in mind so um so i guess that's why so that just plugs in there plug it into a thing i have done that now grab the small end and connect it into the computer put it into the wall i did it the other way around you made a computer! Now follow the steps on the screen. So if I plugged it in by now, I would have seen something on the screen. And the flashing lights it says. Blah blah blah, about turning on the keyboard. The keyboard has hidden powers. Activate the functions while holding FN. Cool, make share. When the green lights flash fast, charge your keyboard. So if the lights are flashing really quickly, that means it's time to charge the keyboard. In fact, I might plug the keyboard in now to let it charge while I'm preparing for the next video. Ooh, that folds around there nicely. So it's sort of forward instead of sideways. You charge it just by plugging it in like that. I wonder if it needs to be turned on to charge. Hmm. 
I just pressed the button. Why is that? Oh. Every time. Okay, so we've got a red light on. I suspect the Raspberry Pi is booted up, even though there is something called a power button. And there is a light now flashing on the keyboard, which means it's receiving power and charging. I wonder how they've done it. Can't wait to see it with a screen connected. <laughs> right, that's the unboxing complete. I'm really excited about it. I can't wait to start recording footage. That's another thing I need to get sorted for the next video, is finding a way to record the footage so that you've got a clear picture of what's going to be on the screen that I'm looking at, rather than having a camera just recording the screen, you won't be able to see the text and what have you. I'm going to do a full review, like go through it every single step, no jumping about, you're going to see absolutely everything. And I'm going to dig deep and find out how good the tutorials are on teaching children how to be able to program, or is it just a bit gimmicky and just a you know, you get to do this, you get to do that, there's only a little few things. Okay, time for a real computer on a full laptop. That's a big step. I'm hoping that this is designed to start really, really simple and slowly work up into some semi-advanced programming. At least maybe a little bit of HTML. I don't know. Just just maybe a little bit, then maybe that's slightly too far, who knows. But hopefully at least some real programming will be there rather than what this starts with. Hopefully there'll be some real adult level programming just to play with a little bit, but I expect it won't introduce that straight away. I'm hoping to see some kind of step-by-step -step process that really does get you started. And rather than just bogging you into one little area, I'm hoping to see something that encourages the user to progress onto something a little bit more difficult. Maybe some kind of score system or an educational workflow that will get a child able to program going from zero to something. Well, thank you for watching the unboxing video. Like, subscribe and stay tuned to be able to see the next video or just keep coming back. Add my page to your favourites. There's one you haven't heard for a while. Yes. Add my homepage to your bookmark bar or your favourite bookmarks to see the next video. Uh, it might take me a while to go through it all. Hi, Scruff. Where have you been? Everyone's missed you. Hmm? What's this? New things. New things. You're going to fit inside that box. It's nice and soft. Look, it's got foam in it and everything. Are you quite content there, are you? <laughs> my guy. <laughs> Good boy. Well, there you go. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.